There we go. Okay, my audio is back on. Um, I don't know why the audio shot up. I really hope that doesn't affect the um, recording. But what I was saying is, so I was sick for a number of years. So that was 2009, I got sick. 2014, I finally found essential oils. And I had been working with, i have been working on my diet. I had been trying to use herbs and nothing had worked the way the essential oil started to affect me. Um, within a year, my immune system was unrecognizable. I would get sick and it would only last maybe five days. I mean, from like beginning to end of fatigue and recovery. Am um, I only getting sick twice a year as opposed to multiple times within a month? It was a huge shift between the supplements from doTERRA and the essential oils from doTERRA in not only what my body was capable of doing, but then what I was capable of doing. Because when you have a sick body, you just want to lay at home all day. Um, so I am so excited to have the opportunity to come and share with you guys my passion for essential oils and how to go about using them. So we're talking a little less about the essential oils themselves tonight, but and a little bit more about what we're looking for in terms of how to use them. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my screen share and show you my slides. There we go. So you'll see me in your top right hand corner um, while we go out and do all of the slides. But what we're gonna cover today is dilution ratios. This is really simple. There's so many um, pins on Pinterest or websites or blogs that talk about dilution ratios. And I, he really simplified it for us and it was really great. Um, we're gonna talk about safety and personalizing your health. I originally had those separate, but you'll see as we go through it why I kind of combined them because really everything that we're gonna talk today flows into its next topic. Um, and then we're gonna talk about testing and doTERRA's standard as opposed to the oils of other companies. And I would be remiss to talk about what I learned from Dr. David Hill without mentioning DDR Prime. Um, I learned, as everyone in the room was laughing, that that is probably his favorite product, and he talks about it at every event. So I certainly wanted to make time to go about and do that. So our first slide, um, these are the photos of the slides. I don't have the ability to get these slides, so I'm sorry if they're difficult to see. Like I said, it was a dark elementary cafeteria um, in the middle of winter, so the lighting isn't great. But I want to talk about dilution ratios. And each essential oil within doTERRA is assigned a, ratio, or a rating. There's N, which... Um, means it's uh, neutral, that neat. Um, you don't need to add any um, 
fractionated coconut oil or anything to dilute the essential oil. It could be used neat. If you want to dilute it, it would be one drop of essential oil to one drop of fractionated coconut oil. That's the carrier that I'm gonna focus on today. If the essential oil is assigned S, which is sensitive, so then you would use one drop of essential oil to two drops of your fractionated coconut oil. This is how simple this is. If the oil is given a D uh, rating, that one, um, wow, suddenly I can't remember what that one means. Of course, when we're recording, I would forget what D means. Um, I believe it just means it needs to be diluted. In this situation, S is for if you have sensitive skin. It doesn't have to be diluted, but it might need to because your skin may react that way. In that situation, you could go about putting the oil on your skin. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> And then if you're having any reaction to it, go ahead and add the coconut oil to it. But you don't always have to. Um, D, those are more caustic oils, or we commonly refer to them as hot oils. Um, you would do one drop of essential oil, the, this is for the D rating, to three drops of fractionated coconut oil. And I have my handy product guide right here. Not right, right here, I should have had it closer to me. But when you go and you look at the listing of all the oils, you're going to see that each of the oils has that rating. So all of them, this is aromatic, topical, and internal usage, and then it says neat, sensitive, and dilute. So I was kind of right. Um, and then you'll see where they fall. So the one at the top is the easiest to find, Arbor Vitae or Arbor Vitae. That one has a neat rating. So it doesn't need to be diluted, but if you want to, and sometimes you will want to, and we're gonna cover that, um, when you do want to dilute, sometimes you're, you'll add the one-to-one -one ratio. Again, with the D rating on oils, and you're gonna see that more on your oregano, cinnamon, these are hotter oils, and you wanna dilute them one drop to, of essential oil to three drops of coconut oil. Now, there will be times dependent on your skin and especially children and pregnant women are a different factor. But for the most part, those are the dilution ratios that Dr. Hill suggested. And he very, he even stated that he rarely dilutes. And I've gotten to the point where I don't always dilute when used on myself because I use a specific amount um, or in a specific place. So um, feel free to play with dilutions. It's not scary. You're not going to give yourself third degree burns. Go ahead and put oil on. Keep your fractionated coconut oil right next to you and use it as needed. Um, so the next thing we'll talk about then is when you do want to dilute, because sometimes you want to dilute when it's not just about the heat of it or the skin sensitivity. Sometimes you want to dilute when you're dealing with a specific tissue related issue. So sluggish in tissues remains more localized on tissues. And what that means is when you put coconut oil on and the essential oil on the skin, it's going to stay and affect that layer of skin before penetrating the body. It's not going to be absorbed quite as quickly. So let's say you're using deep blue and I hurt my wrist. I put the deep blue on with the fractionated coconut oil and that deep blue is going to stay and affect the area and as a much slower than it would without it. Um, it does reduce the risk of unwanted reaction, a caustic reaction. So that's that heat, the um, skin sensitivity. Um, and then it does aid in complete absorption. And I will explain why. When you use it undiluted, you have a more efficient penetration through the tissue layer. So it gets absorbed a lot quicker. Um, and it has a greater systemic benefit. So it benefits the whole body because it's being absorbed and dis distributed within the bloodstream as opposed to it just being localized. It is, however, more volatile. So it's more gaseous. So it is going to also, um, and now I'm forgetting the word, it is going to evaporate a lot quicker. And some oils evaporate quicker than others. Citrus oils like wild orange are always going to evaporate quicker than a resin like frankincense um, or vetiver. So it, it's kind of dependent on the oil, but it's something to really keep in mind um, when you do want to dilute and when you don't. So I would dilute, like when my husband has severe back pain, he has suffered from his disc popping out of alignment twice. 
So we use a lot of deep blue in our house. And when he uses deep blue, we use the lotion or we use the fractionated coconut oil because you don't need that much. Your body doesn't need more than a couple drops. And we'll talk about that later. But what you want to, um, what I want to be able to do is get the deep blue on the entirety of his back. So that it stays localized on there and it really the coolness and the heat that all affects him in that positive way. Um, but then there are times when I'm using on guard because I'm not feeling um, as sprightly today. When I go ahead and use that, I would not want to dilute that because I want it to have a greater systemic benefit. So if you guys have any questions on dilution, that's really it for dilution. It's really straightforward. Um, certainly with children, we're going to talk about um, how much you want to use with children. There is a little bit more of a difference. Um, same thing with pregnant women, because a lot of times in pregnancy, you know how we have that glow? It's because, and we're much redder, it's because our blood vessels have raised to the surface a lot more, and our skin becomes a lot more sensitive. So again, it's going to be one of those situations where you want to pay a lot of attention. Um, with infants, I always, always, always recommend diluting, probably more than necessary because their skin is so much more sensitive. And if you guys have more questions on dilutions for children, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer those questions. But we are gonna move on and talk about safety in use. So essential oils are safe to use. They're a wonderful opportunity to safely assist your family um, through your daily activities. But you really need to know how much to use and or how little rather to use um, because and we'll talk about how that affects your body based off of your ability to metabolize it so in safety to use you can find this on doTERRA.com um, if you go and search um, and you can find their doTERRA science blog and dr david hill actually a year ago post published this i believe after leadership and it talked about the ideal amounts for adults and children so uh the ideal amount for aromatic there really isn't any um they're not going to give you a suggested what you need to put in your diffuser um why they do that um you know, because diffuser blends can vary anywhere from two drops to seven drops. My personal preference is that I never have more than nine drops in my diffuser at a time of essential oils. Um, a lot of it's dependent on the size room that you're in, but for the most part in my living room kitchen, I never do more than nine. Um, and it's a pretty big area. So I would say I have the Aroma Light, which is about a 500 square foot diffuser, and that room might even be a little bigger than that. Um, but let's focus on internal, oral, and dermal. So internal for adults, the ideal amount is two to four drops. And within a 24-hour max, they recommend 12 to 24 drops total. For children, the ideal amounts are one to two drops. And you would not want to exceed in a 24-hour period more than three to 12 drops for taking it orally. So this is under the tongue. So this is different than dermally on our skin. So when we take it, um, and then internally would be more if you're taking it in a soft gel or if you're drinking it with water and it's going down uh, the esophagus a lot faster. Oral is for when it's really just sitting underneath the tongue. You would wanna do one to three drops and within a 24 hour period, no more than four to 18 drops. And they give those differences because you have to take into consideration uh, body type, the size of the person. My husband is much bigger than me, so he's going to potentially use more than me. But we're not talking a cup more. We're talking drops more. Um, so I might do 20 drops in a day, and he might do 24. Um, and then I think we talked for children internal, so I want to go to oral. Um, oral was one to three drops. I think we covered that. Sorry, guys. Um, four to eight drops in a 24-hour period. I would be shocked if you could get a child to take essential oils orally. They don't always taste great. I love lemon and grapefruit and peppermint in my water. I like adding those, but my kid's not always going to like it. And my kid will eat just about anything. He loves sushi. So they don't really have a regulation for it, um, but it's not really something that we ideally do with kids anyway. For the most part, we're focusing on dermal and aromatic. So let's get down to dermal. So topical application for adults, three to six drops are the ideal amount. 
Um, and again, that's dependent on the size of the area that you're trying to cover. Um, if I'm going to just put oils on my big toe, which is great because that's the reflex, um, the nerve endings for your brain, um, that's, I would put maybe two drops on that. But if I'm going to cover my back, then I would probably do six drops. So that's why we have this range. Um, within a 24-hour max, you would not want to do any more than 12 to 36 drops. For children, the ideal amount is one to two drops. And a 24-hour max is three to 12 drops. And you guys are struggling with this. I am going to actually make a note to myself to post on um, my Facebook page the link to this. So anyway, this, uh, like I said, it's really simple. It's really easy to use essential oils. They shouldn't be scary. I don't want to say any of this to scare you away from it, just to encourage and uh, educate on how to better use them. So let's go to our next slide. So what method do we use? And I thought this was so cool that he went into this. Um, so you're going to see bioavailability and bioavailability is um, the strength of the effects versus the time of the metabolism. So how long it's affecting our body, how long it's going to take us to metabolize it before it leaves our system. So if we show oral, and it starts out right at the top when you take it orally, but it doesn't last for very long. So if you need something with a quick punch, something with a lot of strength, but and you need it right away, oral and internal, those both start at the same spot. Um, those are a great start. So for me, for example, when I have um, severe head pains, not exactly sure the legit way to say that, but I use two drops of fractionated coconut oil, put it under my tongue and a little bit on, on the roof of my mouth. And that's how I go about taking it. That's a great way to start. Dermal application, it builds and it, and it lasts a lot longer. Um, it does build to a higher point. It has a strong effect, um, but it's going to last longer. So that's kind of your medium range. And then your inhalation, when you're using it aromatically, it doesn't have the same effect on us. That's the line that you see that goes straight along across the bottom, but it lasts for so long. And one of the amazing things that I actually learned this weekend, it wasn't even at this class, was how long, once the essential oils are in the air, if you have a good diffuser, so we're talking doTERRA diffusers here, if you have a good diffuser, even after your diffuser has turned off, those oils are still in the air. They're still affecting you. So the effects of using it aromatically really last all day. Um, so that's why we put wild orange and peppermint, or today I use wild orange and cedarwood first thing in the morning. Get us all woken up. Use it throughout the day. Make sure those oils are in the air. Um, so then that should help you figure out how you want to use oils. Um, one of the examples was taking on guard internally in our soft gels. You want that quick punch when you're starting to feel those aches and irritants. Um, but the inhalation method will last so long that that's a great option for you as well. Um, what method do I use? So this types in a little bit more. Remember systemic versus localized benefit. So affecting the whole system, the whole body, as opposed, as opposed to just affecting the wrist if I'm struggling with wrist pain. So uh, the different ways that you would go about using essential oils aromatically will affect the system and localized benefits. Remember diluted versus undiluted. And it's going to specifically really focus on respiratory and mood. Um, so, because we're breathing it into our lungs, and it's going to affect our mood through our sense of smell, which is another class I teach on essential oils and emotions. Um, I don't have one scheduled, but it's a great class, and that dives in a lot more into the aromatic qualities of essential oils. For dermal, it's again systemic and localized, but it's going to target cosmetic application. Um, I love juniper berry for skin blemishes. Um, a lot of people recommend lavender, and lavender is great, too. We actually have a wonderful story with lavender. My son has severe eczema. Um, I'm going to try and make it short, but my son had severe eczema. We went to the pediatrician, and they gave us a prescription. I went to go pick up the prescription, and the pharmacist wouldn't give it to me. And when I asked, he, he was really hesitant, and, you know, I don't want you to take that, or she, rather, I don't want you to take that because your son's only eight months old. And I said, well, what's the problem with that? And he said, this will cause permanent skin damage this will cause permanent skin scarring. So I panic, but I'm a, I'm a new essential oil user, so I go to my little book and I research what's good for skin irritation. 
and I find lavender. And lavender, I started applying, um, I would apply it neat and keep an eye on it. Usually would dilute it on him because he was just a baby. Um, I would apply it on those eczema spots and needless to say, I found a new pediatrician. And the new pediatrician, when I asked her, I said, hey, you know, what's going on with his eczema? And she said, what eczema? There's some dry skin here, but this isn't eczema anymore. So the power of using it dermally on skin blemishes is really quite impressive. Um, for internal, it's going to focus a lot on gastrointestinal. And that makes sense. You're swallowing it. It's going into your stomach. Um, orally, it talks about whole body system support, which this supports um, the graft that we saw before, that the oral had the biggest impact, fastest, um, and that it, it affected the whole body. So let's go to our next slide. Personalizing your health. Okay. Sorry, guys. I don't know. Where did my slides go? All right, hold on everybody. So sorry, I ended screen share because I wanna see that they are still in the presentation. All right, we're gonna pause this. All right, I'm resuming. 